The Bank of Ghana Governor Ernest Addison says the current plan in Ghana is to have interoperability between the mobile money platforms and the banking system. CNBC Africa's Kenneth Ibama discussed the impact of digitization on the country's banking industry and more with him on the sidelines of the annual meetings of the African Development Bank. Take a look. Very interesting conversations we've had so far around you know, leading the charge for um, industrialization in, in Africa. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Well, we're actually talking about digitization and the impact of digitization on the financial sector. And I had argued that digitization is a game changer uh, for some of the big problems that we have in Africa. If you look at the financial sector, we have those that were financially excluded because of geography. They are in the rural areas. We have large informal sectors that did not have access to finance, etc. So now we try to address this issue by, you know, having the traditional banks opening up branches, trying to set up other tiers of institutions such as micro finance companies and, you know, smaller rural banks in the villages and all that which is the way the traditional banking approached the issue of financial exclusion. Now with digital technology and mobile money in particular, we are able to reach everybody in the system more or less. And therefore, uh, in a sense, you are including all of these people in, in the financial sector. And the current plan in Ghana is to have what we call interoperability, interoperability between the money, mobile money platform and the banking system. In other words, you can have transfers done between mobile money wallets and bank accounts. So once you're able to reach to all those who are in the informal sector, who were not previously able to be part of your financial system, now you can bring them all into the financial system through the linkage with mobile money accounts. So very interesting times we're seeing for yes. financial service system, yes. but now we're looking at a lot of disruptions on the way. We're yes. seeing what blockchain is doing across the world. We're seeing what's happening with cryptocurrency and all that. Right. Sitting as the central bank in Ghana, you know, what's your biggest worry? And how do you think we should ad address it from the standpoint of efficiency, chasing efficiency versus risk? No, I think the things are moving very fast. We in Ghana have you know, come out publicly to say that we are still trying to study the virtual currencies and establish a regulatory framework for them. And until then, we are not licensing anybody to, in a sense, uh, trade in cryptocurrencies. Oh, and we are not recognizing it as a, a mode of payment. So this is the notice that we, are I we issued. But we also say that we, we know the importance of the technology underlying you know, bitcoins and cryptocurrency generally. This is, and this is technology that we are interested in looking at using to solve some of the payment system challenges that we have in our respective countries. But don't you think we run the risk of missing out on another very innovative period in the financial services? So industry? this is exactly the, the issue. The, the issue is not an outright ban. It's just to tell you that it's not within a regulatory framework. So in a sense, uh, you, are, you are on your own. We are not really exactly also burning it, but we can see the positive aspects of, of that technology. Interesting times for Ghana. We're seeing what's happening in the banking space already as it is right now. You do new minimum capital requirements for the banks and all that. How are banks uh, feeling on, on this? No, you think, we think that the banking system in Ghana is very strong in terms of the capital adequacy ratios we are up system-wide capital adequacy ratio at around 18 percent in terms of liquidity they are doing very well even in terms of profitability the banks are doing well we had a problem a year ago when we did an asset quality review exercise and that you know we had some banks recognize more loans that were not performing and needed to make the necessary provision for those loans and this this reclassification of the loans and the provisioning requirement that comes with that led to a capital shortage for a few banks. But that issue is being addressed. And one of the ways in which we are addressing that was the minimum capital requirement, 
which we raised because the original capital requirement had been, in a sense, eroded because of macroeconomic developments in the country with high inflation and exchange rate depreciation. So in real terms, the capital had dwindled. So this is one of the motivations for doing that. Second motivation is the issue of single obligo uh, wipers, which the banks had to be uh, coming to the central bank for. There is a reason why you have those prudential regulations and why the single obligo limits are set for banks. But we had a situation where the capital levels were so low that the banks needed you know, those single obligo wipers for almost you know, regular transactions, which should not be. So we had to, in a sense, get a value of the average you know, project that the banks are financing for which the, you know, the, yeah, the Bank of Ghana had to. I want to go back to your first point. Wisers, yeah. I want to go back to your first point and look at the deadline provided for this. You know, when we look at that deadline, you know, uh, we're seeing that some banks, I, I, I read a story about some, some banks complaining about that timeline not being enough for them. Yeah. We look at the amount involved, 400 million um, CDs. Yeah. You know, is that time, the end of the, by the end of the year, December, is that enough time for banks to the meet up with this? The deadline is the, remains the end of this year. And there's a, there's a reason for that, because we've done this in the past. You extend the deadline, and the banks never really consolidate. And we want to see some consolidation in the system. We've also put on the table that the banks that you know, are not able to raise that capital should come together in, a, in the form of mergers. And you know, we are ready to just accept an indication of a plan of how you, know, you intend to put yourselves together to meet that minimum capital requirement. The idea is not to say that these banks would have completely merged by the end of 31st December. I mean, there are operational difficulties in doing that, integrating their IT systems, staff and, and staffing, and all of those things. Those are operational issues that can be dealt with in the longer time frame. But just come up with the indication that this is what you are planning to do. Uh, maybe these are the banks that are planning to come together in order to meet this new minimum capital requirement. And then I think the rest of it you know, would be implemented over a longer period. So implementation is not necessarily for December 31st. Okay. Implementation, obviously, will take a while. But you need to make that conscious decision yeah. on meeting that minimum capital requirement. Interesting, interesting. Another thing I'd like to take you up on is, you know, aligning fiscal policy and monetary policy. Well, this has been very important for us from the macroeconomic framework perspective. You know, a year ago, when the new government came into power, the big problem that the Ghanaian economy had was high inflation, high exchange rate depreciation as a result of very large fiscal deficits. So you needed to put into place a plan. And this is both the fiscal and the monetary policy plan. The fiscal consolidation plan is addressing the budgetary problem, trying to raise revenues and managing expenditures and keeping the fiscal deficit within a, a certain threshold. And if you look at the case of Ghana, the fiscal deficit was reduced by 300 basis points in, in 2017, moving from over 9% to 6.3% in 2017. So that's the fiscal part of it. The monetary part of it is the rates of inflation. And you can see inflation has declined from 15.4% a year ago to just about 9 6 percent as of March 2018. So both, both sides are working towards the same objective, and the objective is stability. Stability in prices, stability in exchange rates, and higher growth. And this is where the coordination uh, comes in. We are both working to the to same objective. Okay. Finally, I'd like you to speak on the, you know, the government debt right now. You recently tapped into the, you know, the eurobond market, you know, and all that. You know, we also know that the, the IMF program is almost, almost about to end as well. You know, can you just give me a sense of what your, or your picture of Ghana's debt stock and you think if it's, if, it's, if it's adequate? The government debt stock is currently around 60% of GDP, yeah. which is not necessarily ex uh, ex extremely alarming. It's a moderate debt situation. Uh, we expect that Ghana's GDP would be rebased next month 
from the preliminary indications that I'm getting, this would be about a 30% adjustment to the GDP base. That would bring, that in itself will bring the debt to GDP ratios down. But when you are making an assessment of the economy in terms of the pitch that we made for the sovereign bond issue, it's, it's the big macro story, the big story of a big turnaround in the main headlines, the growth rates have been, you know, reversed significantly, 3% versus nearly 7% growth rate, inflation of 15.4 versus 9%, a deficit of 9% versus 3 So you see a major turnaround in all the macroeconomic indicators in the, in the Ghanaian economy. And this was really the selling point of that sovereign yeah. bond. I, I quite agree with you on the... On the on the macro story there. We've yeah. seen one of the best performing, you know, countries in West Africa. And in the finance Africa. minister got an award for that. Yeah, so, <laughs> so just above it, 8%. Eight, eight yes. You know, so I'd like to get your projections for the rest of the year, for 2018. In terms of inflation, our central forecast is for 8%, right? So we are currently at 9.4%. And within the band, within the 2% band, we are on target. We expect that inflation will continue on a downward path, we hoping to reach the central point, maybe sometime in the second quarter of 2019. Bearing any, you know, these days you can never predict what would happen to oil prices or in terms of some of the trade wars that we are seeing. But bearing any extreme developments, we expect these projections to materialize in the second quarter of next year. That was Ernest Addison, governor of the Bank of Ghana.